Hello and welcome to another video. If you have struggled with comparison tests, either direct comparison or limit com comparison tests, this video is going to help you because I'm going to explain when to use it, how to use it, and why you should use it. So I have a problem to explain the entire concept and we're going to use it for both the direct comparison and the limit, comp and the limit comparison test. So you have a series here. You just want to know if this is going to converge to a finite number. Remember, you're doing the comparison test because the divergence test did not help you. You don't know if it's going to diverge or converge. So, and it is not a geometric series because of this minus one sitting here. Because if this minus one was not here, this is clearly a geometric series. Okay, where your common ratio will be one half and then you know it's going to converge and you're done because it's a geometric series. But once you have something like this beside it, you can no longer treat it as a geometric series. Also, if you look at it, it is not a P series because the power is not constant. Remember for a P series, the exponent is what is constant and the base is changing. So it's gonna be reversed. If it was N squared, then you say it's a P series. So based on what we know, this is a modified version of a geometric series with a common ratio of one half, okay? Because if this wasn't here, we know we could write this as three times one half raised to power n. So now we know it is a modified geometric series and that's what we're gonna compare it to. Whether you're doing direct comparison or you're doing the integral, sorry, you're doing the limit comparison test. Okay, you're still going to compare it to a geometric series. Don't just compare to random things. You have to know what you're comparing it to. And this you compare to a geometric series with a common ratio of one half. Let me write that down. The next thing you want to do is what do you suspect? Okay, do you think it's going to converge or diverge? Because that determines how you do your direct comparison. Okay, so do you think it's going to converge or diverge? Let's see what happens at infinity. As you keep going to infinity, this thing gets bigger and bigger, and then the whole thing gets smaller and smaller. So the, the common sense um, decision you want to make is to say, I think this is going to converge. So you want to do um, a comparison to a geometric series, and you want to make sure that, because for you to do a comparison, if what you know is going to converge, is compared to this, this has to be below it, has to be under it, so that what you know will converge will compress this to convergence. What are the conditions that have to be met? The first condition is that all the terms in this um, series must be positive. Okay, all the terms as you keep going, as n goes from 1 to 2 to 3, all the values you'll be getting must be positive. So before you start at all, you want to make sure that to do any comparison test, the terms in the series must be positive, permanently positive. First condition, all terms must be positive. Second condition, you know what you want to compare it to. So we're going to compare it to this, 3 over 2 to the n. We're ignoring the minus 1. Okay, now before you start, remember, because it is certain that this converges because the common ratio of this is 1 over 2. Common ratio is 1 half. Because it will converge, you have to make sure this is less than this. That's the only way the direct comparison is useful. If this is not less than this, what you're having is this one is going down and this is just up there. So this has no effect on this. So you want the one that converges to be above the one you're comparing. Okay, so let's see how to set that up. We need to decide which one is bigger. Remember, what we want is that this is less than this. How do you show that this is less than this? What you do is ignore the top, just focus on the denominators because that's what matters. So now we're going to say 2 to the n minus 1 we want to compare it to 2 to the n. What do you think is the connection between this and this? Is it less than or greater than? Definitely they're not equal. This is less than this because this has minus 1. So this is smaller. 
okay? Because we're subtracting one from this. Now, but this is not what we're working with. We want the, um, the reciprocal, okay? We have to push this down. So when you push this down, two to the end, minus one, this sign will change to one over two to the end. This is just simple algebra. Remember, if two is less than four, if you flip it to become one over two and one over four, this sign has to change. One half is greater than a quarter. So that's the idea behind this. So now we can see that this is greater than this. Now we can now multiply by three. So we have three over two to the n minus one is greater than three over two to the n. So now look. Can we use the comparison, the direct comparison test in this case? No, because our desire was that this would be less than this, and then we can just say it will converge because this converges. If this sign was the other way, this is the end of our test. You will just say, therefore, this series will converge because this series converges by the direct comparison test. But now we cannot use it, so it fails. It doesn't fail, it's just useless. Okay, we can't use it. So when direct comparison fails, don't throw everything away because the limit comparison will save you. However, you have to do one more thing because the condition for limit comparison is not just that all terms must be positive. You have to also show that this, the terms in this series is, the terms are decreasing. It's a decreasing function. If you write this as a function, you take the derivative, the derivative of the function is always negative. That's what you want to look for. Or find another way to show that this is decreasing. That is, a sub 2 is less than a sub 1, however you want to show it. But taking the derivative is the quickest way. So for limit comparison test, remember the first condition is all terms must be positive. We already did that. Now we need to know that this, if this is a function, the function is a decreasing function. And the most secure way is just to take the derivative, okay? So we're gonna say let, please do not differentiate this because this is not differentiable, because it's not continuous. Okay, we're going from one to two. We're just jumping from one to two. So there are huge gaps between one and two. So for you to be able to do this, you have to say let f of x be equal to three over two to the x minus one. So you have to write it as if it's a function and then you take the derivative of this, okay? So let's rewrite this as three times two to the x minus one raised to negative one. And then if we take the derivative, f prime of x will be equal to, this is negative three, um, two to the x minus one raised to negative two. And then we multiply by the derivative of the inside, which is gonna be two to the x times the natural log of two, so that if you clean this up, your answer is gonna look like this. Natural log of um, one over eight divided by two to the x minus one squared. Okay, see the bottom of this is always positive. Anything you square will be positive. The top is always negative because it's a constant. What's the natural log of one over eight? Well, it's negative, okay? The natural log of anything below one, below, um, below one, yeah, it will be negative, okay? Or less than one, not below one. Less than one, okay, it will be negative. So, so basically, this is always negative. This implies always negative. So we can say, therefore, we can say that three over two to the n minus one is a decreasing function. If you don't understand this, you might as well write it as negative three times the natural log of two, if that's a better option. Just leave it this way. At least now you see natural log of two is always positive, and this is always positive, but there's a nat minus three. So that's another way to look at it. Now, what is the limit comparison test? This is what it says. If the series that you're comparing, you call it a sub n, if a sub n is equal to, you see this term, is three 
over 2 to the n minus 1. Now, the one you know converges. Remember, we already decided that this converges. Where is the function? Okay, let's write it this one. That the one we know converges, let's call it b sub n, and it's going to be 3 over 2 to the n. The limit as n goes to infinity of a sub n over b sub n is equal to L. Let's just write L as the limit because this L has three possible, three possible answers. The first answer is that you get a number between zero and infinity. Okay? It's not zero and it's not infinity. Any number you get in between is a good number. <laughs> okay? If you do that and you get a good number, you're good. Okay, so this is what's going to happen. So remember, if L is between 0 and infinity, not 0 and not infinity, any finite number in between, then both A and B will behave the same way. See, that's an easy way to remember it. Okay? You get a finite number, A and B will behave the same way. A sub n behaves as b sub n. That's the summary of it. So if what you're pursuing is convergence, once you get a number between 0 and infinity, anything that b does is what a does. So if b converges, a converges. If b diverges, a diverges. Okay, a sub n diverges. So you could tell that it diverges. And that's what we're going to do. Now, what happens if it's 0? If L equals zero, it is only useful if you are pursuing convergence. It's just easy. To your left, take it as convergence. Anything you get, so you have zero is less than L and L is less than infinity. So anything you get from here to here, it is to show convergence. That means your B has to be convergent. And if you get anything, from here, this way, it shows divergence. That means your B has to be divergent. So anything you get here works for both divergence or convergence, depending on what B is. Because if you get a finite number, a finite number works, or zero will always work if B is convergent. A finite number or infinity will always work if B is divergent. You need to clean that up. You need to master it. But the safest thing you want to get is any number other than zero or infinity. That way you don't have to be confused. Whatever B is, is what A will be. Okay. However, just listen. Let me give you an example why this could be confusing. Since we're pursuing convergence, and we know this converges, if we got infinity here, it would be useless. We cannot use it. Okay. If this was infinite, this L is infinity, it can help us. Because when you're pursuing convergence, the only numbers that can help you are finite numbers. Zero and any other value less than infinity. And anytime you're seeking divergence, the numbers that help you are any number starting not zero, but anything that goes beyond zero up to infinity will support divergence if this was divergent, which is not what we have. Okay, so let's say we take the limit now. A sub n is this. So let's say the limit as n goes to infinity of 3 over 2 to the n. That's 3 over 2 to the n minus 1 divided by this 3 over 2 to the n. That's going to be the limit. If we divide this by this, it's going to end up becoming 2 to the n over 2 to the n minus 1. Clearly you can see that we're going to get a finite number, okay? This is equal to the limit as n goes to infinity. If you factor out 2 to the n from the denominator, you're going to get 2 to the n over 2 to the n times 1 minus 1 over 2 to the n, which is equal to these two cancel out. That's the limit as n goes to infinity of 1 over, this is going to be 1, minus 1 over 2 to the n. 
Well, as n goes to infinity, this is going to go to 0, and you have 1 over 1 minus 0, which is 1 over 1, which is equal to 1. So we've gotten a value that is finite between 0 and infinity, and that means a sub n will behave exactly as b sub n behaves, which means it's going to convert. Therefore, the series, um, what is it? 3 over 2 to the n minus 1 converges by the limit comparison test. It is important that you write this statement at the end. It shows that you, you have a reason for making the claim that you made. I'll see you in the next video. Never stop learning. Those who stop learning have stopped living. Bye-bye.